be live. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is your man, Umar Ali, STL Stranger, the Iron Amin to the Rock. Here with my aunt, Talal Ahmed. We are here live from, we are here live from Yateman Market in the Old Fallon Park neighborhood of North St. Louis with your daily news report here on the 28th day of September, year 2015. I want to start with our... Welcome to the Systematic Freedom Morning Show. Uh, brought to you live from North St. Louis here at Yateman Cafe. Uh, come by here at the intersection of Carter and Antheline. Get your hot food, your fresh new ports. Hot coffee, hot sandwiches. Freshest new ports in the city of St. Louis. Get your vest sodas, OVN, and hot chips. Back in new ports. Also, we got great sandwiches here. Chicken shawarma sandwiches, gyro sandwiches, burgers. Uh, they got uh, quesadillas, chicken quesadillas, uh, fish fries, catfish, every kind of sandwich you want we have here at Yateman Market here in North St. Louis, corner of Athlon and Carter, right down the street from beautiful Old Fallon Park here in lovely North St. Louis. Now the weather today in St. Louis, we have a high of 84, uh, 84 low of 65, a 20% chance of precipitation, 65% humidity, and winds gusting at five miles per hour. In the sports report, it was a tough day for St. Louis yesterday. I was at Bush Stadium, our beautiful and lovely Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis, or Bush 3 as some call it, and the St. Louis Cardinals led 3-1 to one going into the ninth inning, and in the top of the ninth, gave up seven runs to the Milwaukee Brewers, gave up a, a pinch hit grand slam, and then a three-run homer, and the Cardinals ended up losing 8-4. to four. Trevor Rosenthal not looking so good. We're going to need him to get on his game in the playoffs, and I tell you what, Mike Matheny, you know, I've never been a big Matheny fan. He's going to be on the hot seat if he has another good regular season and drops another egg in the playoff. He's looking like he might be a Peyton Manning type, a regular season type of dude we need to win as a postseason kind of guy. And then, you know, we had a little up north from Bush Stadium. We had the dome and atrocious performance by the miserable St. Louis Rams. No self-respecting St. Louis should be cheering for the Rams this year. If you respect yourself and respect your city, how can you cheer for Stan Kroenke's organization when he's trying to desecrate and gouge and terrorize the taxpayers of the city of St. Louis? We saw an NFL football game yesterday with the Pittsburgh Steelers and St. Louis Rams without a single touchdown being scored. A 12-6 debacle. The only highlight of the game was Big Ben Roethlisberger going out with a leg injury. And then my man Slick Vic, Mike Vic, came in the game. But still there was no touchdown. Miserable performance by the St. Louis Rams. Now. Uh, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, that was your uh, sports report uh, brought to you by Jim Hacking, attorney at law Esquire. Reach out to him when you get in trouble. He handles civil, uh, criminal, and uh, uh, immigration. And also brought to you by Yateman Market here at the intersection of Carter and Antheline. Come in and get your hot food, your fresh Newports, Vest Sodis, and, and we out here. And I'm going to tell you what, Jim Hacking is one hell of a fine attorney. He's rep representing me everything from traffic tickets to terrorism. Jim Hacking can do it all. He is the legal eagle, legal mind of St. Louis. Scott Rosenblum, I say whom? Now, moving on to the news. In local news, we had a caller ride van shot up on Kings Highway in Lexington on the north. Hey, I got that, but hold up. Scott Rosenblum owed me five grand. He charged me five grand for a gun case about six years ago, and, and I still wound up on papers. That's why I say Scott that, was, that was the same thing the, probate, the public defender exactly. was going to get That's why I say me. Scott Rosenblum whom? People act like Scott Rosenblum walk on water. Like you can get caught with a truck full of dope and guns and dead bodies, and all you got to do is give uh, Scott Rosenblum $100,000, he can get you out of jail. Scott Rosenblum, I need my five grand. Don't let me catch you in North St. Louis. Yeah, fuck Scott Rosenblum. Now, to St. Louis news, which is brought to you by Umar Taxi. Who needs an Uber when you can get an Umar? Who needs a Laclee cab? And the pedophile Sam Stanley, where you can get an Umar cab. What's the number of the Umar Taxi? Umar Taxi number. Well, hit me up on Twitter at STL Abu Bada. You can, this is modern technology. You can get your your uh, 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 your cab through Twitter, and uh, for good-looking girls, get me through Instagram. You know what I'm trying to say? Uh, at STL Abu Bada. How, how do you spell that? STL A B U B A D U. And on Twitter, I mean on Instagram, it's STL U B L E E. Now, moving on to the news. 
Unfortunately, we had a call arrive there. Shout out on Kings Highway in Lexington on the north side. For those of you not familiar with call arrive, call arrive is a uh, service where you can call and arrange a ride from Metro to Old Bio State, and they will pick you up and take you from point A to point B. Uh, it is really what they claim ride sharing. Call arrive is actually ride sharing, uh, but for low income folks, and you need more investment in call arrive. I picked up a lot of call arrive drivers over the years in the cab. Uh, that was shot up, and of course, over the weekend, we had a murder in Pagedale. We had a few other murders throughout the city of St. Louis, and then we had a veteran, which was uh, highlighted in the, uh, in the news on Channel 4. His mother said, all I want to do for my birthday is go to the Cardinals game with my boys. That's all I want to do. And her son, who was living up in Houston, Houston, a miserable fucking city, by the way, and I got some shit in stores I got to go down there and get pretty soon, but goes out, takes his mother to the Cardinals game. And they're out walking right in front of the old cathedral, in front of the arch. A robber comes up, they give the robber the money, they turn around to rob, and they shoot him up, shoot him in the back, and paralyze him. This is just one of the many atrocities going on in the city of St. Louis on a daily basis. And I think that has nothing to do with the heroin, the heroin ac epidemic. Too. Heroin has these guys out of their fucking minds. Whatever happened to the good old wholesome robbers who would just put a pistol in your face, That's right. take your stuff, and go about their business? Where are the wholesome robbers at? The crackhead, he arrived, he was a good natured guy. He arrived, he's smiling. You know, he just wanted to smoke the crack, you know, hit, hit the pipe. The heroin addict is fiending and violent and dangerous, you know what I'm saying? And there's a reason we have all this on the street. Now keep in mind, the United States of America is in Afghanistan, and the United States of America, you know what I'm saying? And the United States of America is sitting on top of the largest opium fields in the world, and then we have the, the, the streets of America, particularly a place like St. Louis, filled with heroin. Put two and two together. Study Freeway, Freeway Ricky yeah, Ross. Look at the congressional hearings. Look at the congressional hearings of Maxine Waters. Freeway Ricky Ross. Yeah. General Donald Rumsfeld. President George W. Uh, George Bush, Senior. Look at how the crack cocaine Ronald Reagan. epidemic was manufactured. Uh, moving on in other news, we have uh, on national news, Donald Trump seems to be sliding in the polls. He still has a slight lead over Ben Carson. So the Republican polls are like this at the time. Donald Trump is in the lead. He has a slight lead over Ben Carson. Ben Carson's popularity has risen over his anti-Muslim statements. This is what will get you popular in the Republican base. And then you have Carly Fiorina and Marco Rubio vying for third. And then you have Jeb Bush sit sitting by his own lonesome at fifth place. Then you have the rest of the pack down. Jeb Bush sitting on top of $100 million in his pack, and all he can do is fifth place, single digits. I mean, you talk about a guy who had to get out of the race. It's not Scott Walker. It's not Chris Christie. It's not Lindsey Graham. Jeb Bush needs to get out of the race. Name recognition, all that money, and fifth place is all you can do right now. Jeb is, 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 is uh, uh, embarrassing the Bush name. I mean, I don't know how you can embarrass it any more than his brother. I already did, but uh, he needs to power up. Carly Fiorina. We know she was a, a terrible CEO, ran Hewlett Packard into the ground. Ben Carson, he was a brilliant neurosurgeon, but he's a, a, a head case otherwise. I mean, and then Donald Trump, we saw him on 60 Minutes last night, flustered by the questions of Scott Pelley. This is the leader, the, the front runner of the general, of the, of the grand old party. And this has- We love you too. Yeah, this has, we love you too. Yeah. So uh, that's what it is. Now, so so, and and that was your local news and your presidential uh, election news brought to you by Yateman Market at the intersection of Carter and Antheline, where you can come and get your fresh Newports, vest sodas, and hot sandwiches. Also by Attorney Jim Hacking Esquire. Reach out to him to, for civil, criminal, and immigration issues. They got good chicken wings in here too. I can vouch for that. The best chicken wings on the north side. Best chicken wings. I, I would say in the metro area. I'm saying the metro area. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody want to go out to Pappies and all that. Man, take your ass to the north side. Yeman Market. Carter. Yeah, Yeman Market. Market at the intersection of uh, of Carter and Antheline. It's finger licking good. Finger looking good. And you can take a walk, a leisurely stroll down to the north side community, community garden. garden. Get you some fresh after, apples. After you have partaken of the chicken wings. And the, and the best of And go and have yourself a nice fruit dessert. Fruit dessert. Okay. Now, moving on to international news. Uh, we saw Vladimir Putin on 60 Minutes last night. And I think Vladimir Putin, uh, you know, he has his pros and cons, but he gets his a bum rap in the American media. 
who always tends to vilify and uh, the other and caricature the other. Uh, but definitely, uh, Putin has a big base of support in Russia, and he has a base of uh, subtractors in, in Russia as well. But uh, Putin did mention Ferguson. He said, if democracy was perfect in America, you wouldn't see Ferguson. Shout out to Edward Snowden. Run, baby, run. Fuck Edward him. Snowden, run, baby, run. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so Putin let you know that the world was paying attention to Ferguson. The world was paying attention to West Lawson and Canfield. We love you the too. The world was paying attention to this movement. Okay? And Vladimir Putin highlighted this. He said, if democracy was perfect, you wouldn't have Ferguson. But how much democracy is there for the people on the ground in Ferguson? And I would argue not much because of systematic uh, issues of discrimination and, and, and disenfranchisement. Moving on to further international news, in South Sudan has come out that they have rape camps. There's a there's a there's a, a Yahoo News article on this. You know, the whole world is talking about the Yazidi sex slaves. Of course, it's terrible and it's awful what's being done to them. But South Sudan, a, a nation that Israel and the West conspired to make, now has rape camps as a product of the civil war in the south of Sudan. Now that the that the West has got Sudan divided in the old divide and conquer strategy, and now the South Sudan is killing one another and you have rape camps in there, the West and Israel no longer have any interest after they achieved their objective. And I think this is a terrible thing. If you're talking about Yazidi uh, sex slaves, you need to be talking about the sex slaves in South Sudan. And we know, of course, that black Africans do not get the international sympathy that other groups do. We know in Congo you had two or three million people die, same thing in Angola, and you didn't see the international outcry like you saw in other conflicts throughout the world. Now, I want to move on to the Hodge blame game. You know, we, of course, we had the terrible incident at Hajj where the, the, uh, many of the Muslims, uh, I think up to 900, were killed in the stampede. Uh, the Saudi government at first uh, blamed African uh, Hajjis. Now they've taken the blaming Iran. So the Saudis have a full-scale blame Iran strategy. Iran is now blaming a delegation of the Saudi royal family for causing the stampede. The Iran, Saudi Arabia, Shia, Sunni, Salafi beef is even at play during the Hajj stampede catastrophe. This is how this encapsulates, encapsulates the whole region, whether it be Saudi and Iran on one side of Yemen, on the, I mean, on the opposing sides of Yemen, on the opposing sides of Syria, on the opposing sides of Iraq. This is how deep and entrenched this is to where the, the Iranians are saying the Saudis can't run the Hajj anymore. And you had an American Muslim writer named Harun Mogul who wrote for courts that the Hajj should be taken from the Saudis. Uh, this is just pure gibberish, would not be taken serious. First of all, no one takes American Muslims serious in the Muslim world. That's a fact. Number two, this is a guy who uh, was affiliated with the Shalom Hartman Institute, which was a Zionist institute. So no Muslim is going to take this guy serious when he's in bed with uh, the people that are oppressing the Palestinian people. Uh, you getting a lot of love this morning, uh, STL. Getting a lot of love. All right. I, I love y'all back. I love y'all back. This now, is this this is your international news report brought to you by Yateman Market at the intersection of Carter and Antheline, where you can get the best chicken wings in town. Uh, it's finger licking good. Finger licking good. Fresh Newports, Vest Sodis. And now we're moving on to the uh, systematic freedom to allow I mean, strategy. Systematic freedom. Peace and love. Uh, we out here at Gateman Market. Mm. Oh yeah, and definitely, I, I, I do, I do not want to uh, forget the Syrian refugees. Uh, we support those that will support our suffering Syrian refugees. We'll, we'll bring them to St. Louis or other place. We do not want to forget the Syrian refugee crisis. Uh, this is a hit. life for my new pork because right. I smoke Okay. Pork. This is an international catastrophe. And definitely, I was reminded by Zudi Musri, we definitely want to keep the Syrian refugees in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, we definitely need to take in more refugees in this country. We need to lobby our members of Congress. We need to lobby our elected officials. In St. Louis, we are going to take the lead on Syrian refugees. St. Louis, we are going to become a hub of Syrian refugees. This is a problem for all of humanity. Talal Ahmed. Yeah, uh, peace and love, Systematic Freedom Morning Show, brought to you by STL Stranger and Talal Ahmed. Uh, also our sponsor- STL Stranger Books, go to Amazon.com. Dunya Dust, available for 99 cents on Kindle. 
Also, our sponsors, Yateman Market, here at the intersection of Carter and Etheline, where you can get the best hot Palestinian cuisine, cooked to order, fresh Newport cigarettes, vest sodies, and old Vienna style chips. Also, we'd like to give a shout out to our other sponsor, Jim Hacking, Esquire, attorney at law. Uh, you can get at him on criminal, civil, and immigration issues. Uh, I like to, uh, you know, highlight three talking points here. So uh, I was watching Democracy Now, and it was uh, they had a little segment on the Pope, and everybody's all excited about the Pope, talking about the Pope, this, that, and the other about the Pope. Everybody wants the Pope to come down and talk to them, but I'm I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how relevant is that? The papacy is really ir 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 irrelevant when it comes to the need of the demographic of the absolute most oppressed. You see what I'm saying? Poverty just did not just become an issue. Racism did not just become an issue. Uh, drug addiction did not just become an issue. All of these things are just as antiquated as the papacy is in and of itself. And so if the Pope was at all in any kind of way relevant or had any kind of leverage to do anything about these issues, they would have been taken care of by now. He was talking about how he's calling uh, for the internet and into the international gun trade. Guns don't kill people, people kill people. Let's get the heroin off the streets of America. Let's get these crazy ass Ku Klux Klan members out of our police departments, and then maybe we could we could we could we could put a dent in in, in the murder and the mayhem. Faraz is saying in this whole trip you barely mentioned Jesus or religion. Who's that? Faraz. Uh, mm. Jesus or religion. No, he's saying that the Pope barely mentioned Jesus or religion. Right, be, right, and, 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 and that's a testament to 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 how the papacy and the narrative of the Pope is a farce. Mm -hmm. It's all political. Mm -hmm. The Vatican is ran by the mafia. Who has time for that? You know, we're going to change the world not by relying on the Pope, not by relying on Barack Obama, but by organizing our communities. By saying, by, 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 by telling the administration we don't want heroin in our communities and stuff like that. Mm. Okay? Also, this is the first anniversary of the Ayatzinapa trip. And, and, and the Mexican government uh, is, ha, has ignored all pressure from, from the international community to launch a new independent investigation to get to the bottom of, of, of what's going on and what happened to those kids one year ago. And so, you know, I don't know. What do you think? Are they afraid of El Chapo? What's going on, Umar Lee? You know, I could be afraid of El Chapo. You know, El Chapo, I'm going to tell you something. I was down in San Antonio for a boxing match a couple of years ago, and I saw so many young, you know, young men wearing El Chapo Guzman T-shirts, mm -hmm. and I saw girls uh, scantily clad with little El Chapo uh, uh, pictures covering their rear ends. Well, you know what I'm trying to say? You know, from, from, He's from, a folk hero in Mexico. From 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 from, from, from what I what I've heard about El Chapo from from people who actually live in the city of Yatanapa mm -hmm. when I was you know doing some building with them up in New York City was that you know uh, El Chapo was, was all but the people's champ. El, 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 El Chapo, although he has this narrative in the media as a psychopathic uh, uh, murderer, killer, drug dealer, he you know built schools and homes and and and, and fed the fed the people and, and bought textbooks for for the schools and bought sh uh, shoes and stuff for the school children. So I don't I don't I don't know who the real culprit is. Is it El Chapo, or or or, or, or is it the Mexican government that has been hijacked well, by the American? Think, government? I don't think we know. I know the corruption is deeply uh, into the Mexican state. There's a lot of corruption, definitely, uh, within the state. In other national news, 32-year-old uh, David Stargetsky, uh, you know, died in a died in a jail cell in Michigan. Uh, they locked the brother Delicious. up. They locked the brother up over a traffic ticket. Mm. Uh, he just happened to be a heroin addict. You know, since since our government has inflicted this this heroin on, on in our communities, he you know was on heroin. They locked him in a jail cell for 30 days. Didn't give him any methadone. Didn't give him any medical treatment. And watched him on camera wa watch his condition deteriorate and, and, until he died. Uh, fuck the police. Uh, we saying that live from North St. Louis City here at Yeaman Market at the intersection of Carter and at the line where we have the best chicken wings in town, uh, quesadillas, fresh Newports, and Vesodis. Also, another uh, national news: Baltimore County shoots and kills an unarmed man in a wheelchair. What the hell is going on? In a wheelchair? Did, did, didn't you? Guys and it's on camera. You can watch it for yourself. It's on camera. Yeah. Check it out. Michigan County, uh, Baltimore County shoots this unarmed guy. You can Google it. You can see it for yourself. 
the, uh, America, racist white folk. Didn't you guys learn anything from Ferguson? If you keep pushing people, pushing people, pushing people, this motherfucker gonna get set off. I, I always say, what makes a Palestinian, a Palestinian rebel is the same thing that made the people of Ferguson uprise. That's right. Shooting unarmed people in wheelchairs, you know, putting uh, heroin in our communities, it's only so much we can take. Only so much we can take. Shout out to Jim Hacking, attorney Shout out to law, Jim Hacking, Esquire, Market. civil criminal Im immigration, Yemen Market, come get your fresh new portion of your hot food. You got it all for you right here. Old Vienna hot chips, vest soda, new port cigarette, get your hot food in here. Fish fry all day, $7 a plate. Free Wi Fi, Yapeman Market. Go out and get you a hot sandwich, chicken quesadilla, oh. gyro sandwich, and walk down to the Northside Community Garden at the corner of Red Bud and Carter, live here from North St. Louis. Yapeman Market, Yapeman Market, uh, 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 proprietor uh, Zudi Masri, the father of Basim Masri, the international social justice advocate, Free Palestine. Free Palestine. Live from St. Louis. We'll see y'all tomorrow.